right, I want to look at the classified balance sheet. Um, the classified balance sheet actually breaks um, up what we're looking at um, as far as the balance sheet is concerned. If you remember the balance sheet, and we've done a regular balance sheet, is just assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. When we go in and we do this classified balance sheet, we have to um, break up these items um, in a little bit more detail. So what we see with um, our assets, they actually get broken down into um, current assets, long-term investments, plant, property, and equipment, and intangible assets. In looking at um, these items, what we find is with current assets, these are assets that the company expects to convert to cash or actually use up within one year um, or one operating cycle. Um, items that are included with current assets are going to be items such as cash, um, accounts receivable, supplies, um, those prepaid items like prepaid rent, prepaid insurance, um, items like that. You also will see inventory will be listed as one of those items. Um, so these are the things that we look at. We do list these in the um, order of liquidity. Now, with liquidity, this means the um, order in which they expect to be converted into cash. So the items that are the most liquid are cash and cash equivalents. Um, then we could go to another item would be like short-term investments, um, accounts receivable, inventory, and then those prepaid items. So those would be the things, and the order of liquidity um, is the rule of thumb for how we list our current assets on our balance sheet. But you would list all of the current assets, so you would then total those current assets when you're doing a classified balance sheet. The next item we get to um, are those items that are the long-term investments. Now, when I look at long-term investments, um, these are generally um, investments that are in stocks and bonds of another company. Um, they can be held for many years. Other items that you will see um, on the long-term investment side are long-term note receivables. So if you have a note receivable out there um, that maybe has three years before it's going to be paid off and things like that, that would also be on the long-term investment side of things. Um, and then other items you'll see are things that we're not currently using in operations. So if we have a land that we're just sitting out there and we're investing in it and we're not using it, okay? Key here is not using it, you know, in our operations, then it would go on the long-term investment side. The other item that we have for assets would be this plant, um, property and equipment, Other names that you will see for this, you could see plant assets would be a name. Um, the one I use a lot is fixed assets um, is another name for this. So there's a lot, okay, several names that you will see for this. These are assets with relatively long useful lives. Uh, that the company is actually using in its operations. So if you're going to use it for more than a year, then you can't just expense it. You actually have to keep track of it in this fixed asset section. So it's going to be things like land that you're currently using, buildings that are being currently used in operations, equipment, 
that is currently being used in operations. All of these things would be listed in this section. Now the other thing that we have here, because we have to list it um, at its historical cost, so exactly what we paid for it is what we're going to have um, there, but then we will look at depreciation. Now depreciation is the practice of allocating the cost of assets to the number of years in which it's being used. Um, so in this, we'll list all of our assets and then we'll say less accumulated depreciation. Now accumulated depreciation is what we're going to have that is going to keep track of how much depreciation we've taken on assets. Now the way that this would be listed in a um, or on a balance sheet is you would have those fixed assets or plant property equipment, whatever you're calling it. Um, you would list those things out. So you might have land at, you know, $10,000. You might have buildings for, you know, um, $100,000 and then other equipment let's say at $50,000. You would take that and then any depreciation you've taken on the building and equipment, you would do less, this accumulated depreciation. And let's just say we've taken $10,000 worth of um, this depreciation. And then what we would be left with would be that book value or what we're gonna call a net fixed assets is what we would show on our statement. Um, and so in this case, the net amount would be $150,000. And then that would move over to a different column. But that is really what you're looking at with the fixed asset section. Um, the other part that we're going to see um, for assets in the very last one is the intangible assets. With uh, intangible assets, um, the items that we see here are ones that do not have a physical substance, uh, but they can be very valuable. They include things like um, patents, copyrights, trademarks, um, a franchise fees would also be in here. So if you opened up, you know, McDonald's or something, um, you would have your franchise fee, um, and that would be part of an intangible asset. Other items that um, you can see here is something that we call goodwill. And this is when we purchase um, a business and we pay more than what the assets are actually worth for it, we would have goodwill because we're actually paying for that name. Um, when we look at the liability section, liabilities are a little bit easier because there's only two categories. You have current liabilities and you have uh, long-term liabilities. So those are the only things that we have with um, liabilities. When we are looking at those current liabilities, these are things that we expect to pay within one year. All right, so pay within one year. Um, items that we see here, we'll see accounts payable, um, a short-term note payable. If we um, have long-term debt, the current amount that's due on the long-term debt would be included here. Uh, salary and wages payable, income taxes payable, other things that are just so short-term payables are what we'll see. When we look at those long-term liabilities, these are things that it's going to take us more than a year to, um, to actually pay. And these are going to be things, um, it could be a long-term note payable, um, it could be a mortgage payable, um, you could be looking at lease liabilities, pension liabilities. These are all the things that would be listed in that particular section. Um, and then, of course, the last one is the owner's equity section. For Accounting 101, we just have capital, and that is all we're going to have in that equity section. 
when we get to accounting 102 we are going to move into where um, we are going to be looking at corporations when we look at corporations we will have stock um, that we will be looking at we also will have a new account called retained earnings um, and there's a lot more that is involved and we'll be studying that um, in chapter 13 and chapter 14 um, of accounting um, 102 which will be the first thing that we look at when we get to accounting 102 but this is really looking at that classified balance sheet and how we have to move everything and divide everything up for um, the, the classified balance sheet.